Welcome friends, it's Miss Gisa, and today I'm so excited to read to you the book that my husband David and I wrote, and it's called Fish in the Desert, The Untold Story of the Death Valley Pupfish. It is the first in a series of books called the Bringing National Parks to Life series. Adele and her family were on their way to Death Valley National Park. Unfortunately, Adele had hurt her leg playing soccer, so she had to wear a cast for months. She was excited to go to Death Valley, but wondered how she would explore all of the fantastic sights with her injury. After parking the car at Badwater Basin, Adele and her parents stepped onto the salt-crusted floor of what used to be an ancient lake. It looks like snow, Adele exclaimed, but it's so hot, like our oven after baking cookies. Adele wondered if anything could live here. The lake evaporated for thousands of years, creating a salt basin. They were standing at the lowest point on the continent at 282 feet below sea level. For the first time in a while, Adele forgot about her leg and wondered what other cool things they would find. Mom, Dad, there are fish in this desert, Adele shouted. Adele looked into the water. The purpley blue male pupfish was following the tan colored female and blocking other males from getting near her. He looked like a puppy as he darted back and forth, chasing the competition away. It's hard to believe that these tiny fish can exist with this intense heat and salt, marveled mom. Hi, I'm Marjorie, the aquatic ecologist for Death Valley. Those are pretty heroic and scientifically important creatures you're looking at there. They are called the Salt Creek pupfish. Would you like to see where other pupfish live? We'd love to, the whole family replied. In the desert, the Salt Creek pupfish have adapted to water that sometimes has more salt and sometimes less salt throughout the year. During scorching summer months, water evaporates in the pupfish's habitat. They must swim to the section of their creek where a few large pools remain. With the water more available in the cooler winter and spring months, the fish can swim down creek and spawn. Listen to this, Mom and Dad, Adele read out loud from the sign. During the Pleistocene epoch, lakes and marshes filled the area, and over thousands of years, the climate changed and the rivers that fed the lake evaporated. Of all the sea life here, only the pupfish survived as the lake dwindled to a few small pools of water. Adele took out her binoculars and saw a hidden rocky cave on the side of a hill filled with gorgeous blue water. Is that some sort of well? Inside this tiny limestone cavern is a body of water over 500 feet deep where the devil's whole pupfish live. This water comes from an underground aquifer, Marjorie explained. How did the fish get way out here, Adele asked. That's still a bit of a mystery. We need future scientists, maybe you to help us figure that out. I felt so sad and alone wearing this cast for months. These little fish have survived so much more. I'd love to see other pupfish, Adele said. Adele noticed the numerous plants and birds living around the Crystal Spring Boardwalk Oasis in Ash Meadows National Wildlife Refuge. The area was not as desolate as it first appeared. Marjorie explained, the animals have adapted to living in the harsh desert conditions and are important to the ecosystem and the pupfish's survival. Mom, Dad, look! The pupfish are digging into the algae as if they're puppies. The pupfish are omnivores, so they eat both plants and animals. We are certainly learning a lot about these resilient little fish in their fragile environment, said Dad. In a flash, a raven swooped down and plucked a pupfish from the water. <gasps> Adele gasped. That's our food web in action, exclaimed Marjorie. I'd love to show you the unique wetland and pupfish endemic to Saratoga Springs. However, it's pretty secluded and driving on the unpaved road might damage your car. Does endemic mean injured, wondered Adele. Endemic means a unique species native to a specific geographic location. Each pupfish species you saw today is endemic to the places we visited. Adele's pace slowed down. Marjorie asked, think you can make it to one more pool? On the way to King's Pool at Point of Rocks, Marjorie explained that thick layers of porous limestone 
were far below the surface, which stored water that fell many thousands of years ago. The limestone was like a sponge that held the moisture. After many thousands of years and climate change, the water, forced up by pressure, heat, and rock layers, slowly seeped to the surface and emerged at the springs. Are those pupfish connected to other pupfish by underground aquifers? Adele asked inquisitively. Marjorie clarified, the pupfish don't swim back and forth through the aquifers. They are restricted to the pools of water above ground. Over time, the fish in each separate pool slowly evolved into their own subspecies of pupfish. Subspecies? Adele questioned. Pupfish living in separate places for a long time develop unique differences, explained Marjorie. The fish in each pool spring in Ash Meadows have evolved into subspecies due to their isolation from each other. As the water warmed thousands of years ago, these pupfish made their homes in the receding and separated islands of water. Let me get this straight. These living fossils have evaded predators, endured harsh temperatures and utter isolation for thousands of years, Adele marveled. They're tenacious survivors, remarked Dad. Thanks, Marjorie. I've learned so much today. When I fully recover, I'd love to return here with my friends. Can you wait that long, kiddo? Yeah, I'm pretty resilient, Adele said with a sly smile. Then, in the back of our story, you can learn more about Death Valley National Park, about Ash Meadows National Wildlife Refuge, and you can go back into the story to find all of the animals, some are really camouflaged, in the illustrations. There's a glossary for all those big scientific words and a map of Ash Meadows in case you want to go and visit. And then in the back of the book, there's more information about the pupfish, how you can help the pupfish, and how you can help take care of our world and environment. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to like and subscribe to support our channel.